everybody, and welcome to Reach, Flexible Body, Flexible Mind. My name is Craig Hampstead. I'm a dancer, and I've been training for about 28 years. I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing professionals, and I'd like to share with you now what I've learned to be true about increasing your flexibility. We've chaptered out this DVD so you can be an office worker or a housewife or just every man, but there's also benefit for the novice dancer, the intermediate and advanced dancer, the martial artist, the gymnast, and even there's a little bit of light contortionism. Uh, it's important when stretching or embarking upon any new fitness regime that you're aware of yourself, your own limitations. You will be working in a, in a sort of a state of discomfort, which is standard. Stretching isn't easy, but you should never work in a state of pain or, or ever risk injury. There's a way around all that and still have a viable product at the end. Uh, it's important that you consult with a healthcare professional to make sure that this kind of exercise is the right thing for you. And uh, just maintain your breath, try and be relaxed, listen to your body. It will tell you when it's had enough. Take it easy and enjoy. Thanks very much for purchasing the DVD. All right, if you're like me, Sometimes you're stuck on a plane, transoceanic flight, it's endless. You get stiff, you get tense, or maybe you're sitting behind a computer monitor all day, hunching over the keyboards. I mean, that's our lifestyle today. Here's a couple of things you can do that are not necessarily even dance related that can take some of the tension out. Say you're stuck in the middle seat on that, you know, you're going to Europe or wherever you're going. There's a few things you can do. You can simply just roll out the neck and lift as you go to the back. Try not to compress. Just roll it out gently from side to side. If you maintain a rigid abdomen in the base and let everything else move away from there. That in itself is gonna take off a lot of tension in the neck and the shoulders. You can do a forced shrug and drop it. Simply just shrug and drop it. That brings some blood into the area, works it out. I like to pull one elbow into my chest. It stretches the muscles, the anterior deltoid across the back just feels good, opens it up, because tension tends to reside here in the upper back on me. I don't know if you're like me, but this feels good just to do that. And if you have the room, you can pull the elbow around the back of the head, still keeping the abs tight, gently, gently releasing some of the tension in the shoulder. Uh, shoulder rolls, shoulder shrugs, always great to relieve tension. If your lower back's getting a little tight, what you can do is gently cross one foot over, and just take your weight gently forward. There's a piriformis muscle in the back, in the seat and the lower back, and that can tense up if you're rigid in a seat for any amount of time. Just by gently pressing forward, keeping the knee open in the hip. Make sure this doesn't stress out the inside of your knee. This should be, you should feel the benefit of this here in the back. Gently and up, simply rocking forward and back, and that's gonna take a lot of the stress out of your lower back. You'd repeat it on the other side. Symmetry is important when you're stretching. I believe that everyone has a preferred side, but it's important not to favor that. Why work your strengths when you can you know, compensate by working your weaknesses? If you have one leg that's a little bendier, sure, stretch it, but pay extra attention to the one that isn't. There are things you can do as well, just here, pulling the knee into the chest, which, which takes the hamstring all the way up the lower back. Breathe in and let it go. This is stuff you can do seated in a confined space and it takes the tension right out. You'll feel a lot better. In and out. It's important to keep breathing through an oxygenated, an oxygenated muscle is a happy muscle. Just so keep it up. You can repeat these exercises until you feel the benefit. There are things you can do. Just rolling, rolling the ankles, rolling the shoulders, rolling the wrists. Everything will be fine. Maintain a tight core and then afterwards you have this entirely relaxed countenance. All right, this next series of exercises will benefit anyone, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced dancer, whatever your discipline is, this is a very basic warm-up that oxygenates the muscles, that just brings your attention to certain areas. We're gonna roll all the way through the body. Um, I'm the artistic director of Pro Dance Centers, and this is how I begin just about every one of my jazz classes. And I found that this particular formula, this particular format, is the best way to efficiently warm up from head to toe. Very basic warm-up. You wanna start with your feet, planted, wider than hip width, uh, 
tight core stomach in here. The shoulders are down, the rib cage is pulled together. All you're gonna do is breathe in and exhale out, gently bending the knees and rounding the back down. Inhale up, maintaining a tight abdominal and exhale down. Inhale up and press down. Make sure the knees stay over the toe. Inhale up, last time. You're gonna exhale, stay in the plie and recover the back to straight. Everything is stacked, one thing on top of the other, don't fight it. Try not to arch the lower back or release the pelvis, keep it right underneath. You're going to bend to the side, directly to the side. Contract and round over to the front. Taking some stress off the lower back. Recover over to the left side, making sure the shoulders are in line with the hip. And up, maintaining the plie. Over to the left, one, two, round, one. Two, to the side, one, two, and up in the center. Hands planted on the knee, roll down through the spine, elongating the lower back, and then hollow out, contract up, and release at the top. Exhale, on the way down. Inhale on the way up. And this is just attacking the large muscle groups, getting them working, getting some blood, flowing and then there's also turned out positions so this is a grand plie in second it's a pretty wide and aggressive stance what you're eventually trying to do is have the shin perpendicular to the floor the thighs horizontal and depending on your level of flexibility through the groin muscle you can press backwards take your weight forward i like to alternate one shoulder so as you go forward you're stretching the lower back on the right side maintaining the stomach Pressing the left shoulder, so you're working with resistance. Pressing through, alternate the shoulder, and alternate the shoulder, and bring the feet back to parallel, and gently round up through the spine. The weight placement should be on the ball of the foot. The weight should be centered between the first and second toes, so you're not rolling out or rolling in. Have the weight evenly distributed. The next thing you're gonna do is roll down from the top of the head to the floor, creating space in the back of the cervical spine, the upper back, rolling through, and gently releasing forward, maintaining a long neck. A lot of people want to tense up the back of the neck here. Not good. Remember, the spine goes all the way up to the skull, and you want to lengthen forward. Bend the knee, and gently stretch, keeping the weight forward on the ball of the foot. You can stabilize yourself with your hand. Gently bend the knee, and again, lengthen, concentrating on the back of the knee being tight, the stomach working, and the back being relaxed and long. If you're feeling tension in the neck and shoulders, roll out your head and target it. Anything that's sort of bugging you, address it. And bend the knee, and again, use the stomach to recover to a standing up position. Let me show you that in profile. A lot of people doing this stretch are gonna hollow out here and keep the pelvis intact. There is benefit to it, but eventually you would like your hips to become the pivot point of this stretch. So as you elongate, instead of maintaining a hollow and round spine, think of tipping the pelvis gently forward, and this will give you a lot more space in the lower back to lengthen and create a flat line all the way out. Think about a flat line. Eventually, if you're getting your stretch increased, you can pull gently on the back of the ankle at the Achilles and press, or press right through. Remember to bend, soften the knee and use the stomach to roll up. Recovering from a stretch position is just as important as the execution of the stretch itself, so be gentle. Don't do anything too quickly or ballistically. Just be gentle with everything and don't rush. One of the things we do in dance class is called isolation, where you're just isolate, just exactly like it sounds, isolating different parts of the body. But this can be beneficial to everyone. Um, there are movements where you isolate the rib cage specifically, and there's sort of stabili stability muscles, stabilization muscles that come into play, and all contribute to your core strength. So you can start out, I just put one hand on the hip, one arm out to the side, abs are tight, knees are tight, and I'm just gonna press my rib cage to the side without moving my hip, and side, Add the arm, one, and up, 
Increase the reach over to the right, pressing, keeping the core muscles tight, two, and just a little press at the depth of your stretch right there. Other side, to the left, one, and two, take up the arm, one, and two. Inhale, exhale, and press at the depth of your stretch, feeling it in the side. Make sure that you don't pop the rib cage forward during this. You want to maintain a straight body. Unless something terribly wrong happened, everything is stacked one thing on the other, let it stack naturally. Don't fight the natural line of your body. Head isolations, just front, center, up, center, down, center, up, same thing to the side, one, two, three, four, creating space so you're not crunching, seven, eight, isolate right, and side, and side, and side, you can start with a half of a head roll down the front and up, down the front and up and then crease it all the way around. It's important to remember that when you go to the back that you're not collapsing the neck, but you're rather reaching out and back and all the way around. <sighs> Maintaining stomach up and around. If there's residual movement in the shoulder, that's fine. You can eventually add the shoulder into this. The greater your range of motion becomes, you can add into it. I like to soften the knees, taking it full circle all the way around, okay? There are other things when uh, we bent over and did this flat back stretch, for example. You can um, exaggerate the stretch a little bit, trying to maintain a square hip on the top and take your weight over to one leg or the other, making the neck long. And again, pressing through the lower back, keeping the weight forward on the ball of the foot. You walk the hands through center. Feel, sense the back of your knee. Is it tense? Is it locked? Is it straight? Is there pressure in my lower back? Am I hunching my back? You want to release the pelvis forward and relax over. And again, back in the center to the side. For an additional stretch, you can bend the opposite leg to the one that you're concentrating on. It gives up, it targets the inner thigh muscle. And again, walk gently through the side, going over to the other, bending the back knee, relaxing the neck and shoulder in the center. Remember to maintain your breath. And as you curl up, soften the knee, use the stomach, and reestablish your full and upright posture. This next exercise, I believe firmly to be the most beneficial when you're trying to increase your flexibility, hamstring, groin muscle, the connection between upper and lower body. If you do this efficiently and you do this consistently, you will see benefits within one month, I swear. I've seen it happen. I've taken kids from zero to 60 inside about three months in a split position. This lunge is the most effective tool for rapid increase in your flexibility. Same principles apply. You want to maintain a tight core, a lifted upper body, and be aware spatially of where your body is. I'll do this for you in profile. I'm going to start with one foot in front, one foot behind, and I'm going to suck all the arch out of my back. So immediately, right off the top of this, if you're really lifting in the front of the hip, you can feel some tension in the front of the back hip right here. I'm going to rise up on the back foot, keeping it in line with everything else, and press down, targeting the Achilles in the back of the calf there, up and down. This will also warm up your metatarsal arch dancers. Very important, pressing down. Making sure everything stays in a parallel position. The next part of it, I'm gonna bend my front knee directly over the front foot and repeat the exercise, maintaining a tight abdominal pressing. So the benefit is here in the front of the hip and the Achilles in the back. I like to circle my wrists at this point Gymnasts, you know how important wrists are, warm them up. All right, the next part of this lunge, be careful with this. You want, again, maintain a tight abdominal and press in a parallel fashion forward and down. So the onus of this, you will feel it on the front hamstring, but primarily you're targeting the back hip right here. The weight is lifted, it's on the front. Strong body, long neck, relaxed upper body. I'm dropping the back hand, reaching. As I reach to the back, I'm gonna press my hip further forward towards the floor, trying to maintain a straight knee in the back. A gentle lift. I'm gonna bring it around to the inside. 
This is what we call the natural. Where this leg wants to go in your hip is the natural. There's front, there's side, and then there's just where it wants to go. Let it. You can get pretty severe with this stretch, feeling the tension in the front of the hip here. Now you're going to target the muscles in the buttocks back here, and you can go quite severe and lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. This is a hyperextended stretch, not necessarily a beginner move. If you want to maintain some weight on the elbow, that helps some people. Again, the advanced, right on down. And again, you can lift the other arm, spiral up, maintain your breathing, and gently roll it into the next position which is one where the hips are turning out in the hip socket. The straight leg maintains some tension. You can reach with the foot. And the bent leg, make sure the knee maintains over the toe. A lot of people are going to start this feeling this here. There is benefit to it, but again, the wider you get in your stretch, the flatter your hips will become in their second position, anything to the side. If this is a bit too much for you, take some weight up on the hands or take some weight backwards until you can feel this open feeling in the hip. For an additional stretch on the hamstring of the working leg, you can flex the foot, press the knee open over the toe, and relax the body forward. Keep breathing. I'm sort of rushing through a few of these positions. At your leisure, take the time that it needs to fully benefit. They say you want to hold each position for about 45 seconds and try and relax into it. Rather than working it and being tense, breathe and relax into every position. The next one, I'm going to roll back to the lunge position, drop my knee on the ground, and walk the body back up. From here, I can press, again, for the front of the hip. If you want to take the weight off, right there. Keep a long neck. Everything is fine, abdominals are tight, and the more you press into that hip, you're going to feel it. Remember, when you're working towards a split position, it's not just the front leg that's at work, it's the back leg as well. So you have to have equal length, the front hip and the working hamstring. If you want to bump this up a notch, this stretch, take the weight forward on one hand, reach back with the other, and gently pull the foot into the seat. This is going to target the quadricep muscles in the front, uh, gently, you're going to feel tension in there. Most of these muscles aren't used to being elongated this way. Gently, gently, gently press, and release, walk the body back up, and again, we're going to try and straighten both legs. Here, I'm going to roll up for a second. What's going to happen? Here's your starting position. This is exactly how we started the lunge. We're going to take this a step further by taking the weight over the front leg. And again, it's important that you don't crunch the back of the neck. Allow it to elongate. No tension. If anything is working, it's the stomach, the seat for your balance, and if you want to press a little pressure into the back of that knee, good call. If you're not feeling that this is being of any benefit, you can flex the front foot. I guarantee you'll feel it then. Try and maintain a square hip so you're not rolling sideways, but the entire back is elongating down. I like to just remind myself and go from the lunge, pressing, working the back hip, to the front hip. Lengthen the back of the knee. Pressing down, maintaining a strong abdominal, and gently elongating over the front. You repeat this a few times, pressing down. One, two, and stretch. Relax the neck, and down, concentrating on the back hip, and pressing, concentrating on the front knee. Good. For the more advanced student, um, it's not necessarily about just achieving flexibility, it's about maintaining that flexibility in any position. So it's not just about kicking your leg up, but holding your leg up as well. So we're building a range of motion in order to be utilized rather than just be present. So I give my, some of my advanced dancers go from coupe, a fondue position, which is a ballet term, 
to elongating to two straight legs. And gently bring the leg in. You'll notice that this is not a kick. It's not a fast movement. It's a slow and sustained movement where you're working at the peak of your range and forcing the muscle to be not just flexible, but efficient. And down, you can lift the heel and press up. And again, when rolling up, feet it together, curl up through the spine and reestablish your upright posture. The next series of stretches are in a seated position. Hopefully you have a little room in your living room or wherever it is you're working to conduct these safely. Some people want to work on a mat. I deal with a lot of little kids and they're a lot bonier. I never remember being that bony, but they're like, oh, the floor is hurting my back. So if you want to lay down a towel or work on a carpeted surface, maybe you have a yoga mat, terrific. Anyway, be comfortable while you're stretching is the deal. Try not to stretch in a cold environment either. Um, once you get the blood going, the heat thing going on, helps your muscles to elongate a bit faster. There's a position um, that a lot of dancers, gymnasts, a lot of people use. Um, they call it the froggy, the butterfly. There's a whole bunch of different names. I don't know, you're, you're seated, you're lifted well up on your sit bones. What I like to do just for an additional stretch is to press one side into the floor and then go away from it. So I'm elongating my lower back on one side and opening the hip in front. The more you stretch, the lower down you'll go. Some people just have the genetic propensity to flop right over. So if that's a gift, great. I was never that guy. I never had all that turnout. But this will help to increase your turnout if you're concerned about ballet technique. And it'll also really take the stress off your lower back while stretching. Lengthen and breathe and up. And then uh, there's a way to explore the connection between upper and lower body what we're going to do is start to get flexible here in the rocking of the pelvis and maintaining some control while doing that. I like to lift up one and contract down two. Now with my back in a rounded position, I like to go over and relax the head towards the foot and then pull the back long. Let gravity work, keep breathing and then recover. Then I like to reverse that series of movements where I start lifting up and out of the pelvis, round over to the foot. Pull gently back and maintain the straight posture. You can repeat that a couple of times. It's, think of it as a massage. You're rounding and pulling, gently over, lengthening to flat, careful not to crunch the back of the neck, but maintaining the long cervical spine, and up, using the abs, up and out, rounding over, pulling back, and sitting tall. I also like to repeat this with one leg straight. It targets another series of muscles in the back of the leg. So I'm going to lengthen and relax the foot, point the foot. It's up to your discipline. Make sure that the hips are square. Everything is facing in one direction. Repeat. Round one. Contract in a hollow shape. Two. Gently pull the back to flat. Three. And sit tall. Reverse it. Flat. And round pull back, sit tall. If you want an additional benefit, you can flex, contract. One, round two, lift, three, and sit tall, four, and you'd reverse that, maintaining length in the lower back, contract over, pull back, and sit tall. Of course, you'd repeat that on the other side. Everything nice and square, lifted, Da, 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 da. I won't bore you with the repetition. The next position I'd like to show you is here. Um, I don't know, I've amassed so many different kinds of stretches for my own regime. Um, I'm drawing on Pilates, I'm drawing on yoga, um, ballet technique, gymnastic stretches, and this one is from the Martha Graham technique. It's called a Graham fourth, where everything is flush, you're lining up your foot with your center line, so, instead of pulling it across the body, try and open the heel so it's directly in line with your center, with your sternum, with everything. I like to start by targeting the hip and the back and rolling forward, releasing the pelvis, and pulling back. Again, this is going to target every little aspect of the muscles in the front of the hip, rolling back. 
be gentle. Make sure this doesn't aggravate the inside of the knee. And back. And up. And back. And then still maintaining that center. Go flat back over. Let gravity work. Relax forward over the leg. Um, the tendency will be for you to roll into the one side. Try and maintain length out of the lower back and stretch both sides of the back equally. You're going to feel this in all the muscles, the piriformis, the gluteus, all around there. So this is not necessarily targeting hamstring, which has now become the inside, but it's the outside, the exterior muscles of the hip and the thigh. Lengthen forward and up. And whatever feels good, you can target over here, over here, over here. There's so many different connections and angles and attachments. Find out where it's resistant to you and work that. Don't go to the easy path so much. Go to the more difficult path. You're going to get much more benefit and much more result. And again, maintain your breathing throughout. The advanced part of this stretch, you're going to stretch one leg forward. So now we are incorporating the hamstring again. Thinking about squaring the shoulders, lengthening the back, and reaching past the front foot. Again, I'm rushing through a few of these positions, but you can breathe and maintain. Put on some nice transcendental music, anything you enjoy. Whatever, whatever works for you to get in a relaxed situation, do it. You can work a little sideways, a little here. Find out where the resistance is, address it, and relax into it. I also like to stretch to the back in this position. It'll pull you on the front of the hip. A little rotation. Staying low. Working the opposite shoulder. And then back over the leg. Finding out where the tension resides and addressing it. Play with the angle of your hip, the length in your lower back. Keep breathing. The next position is relative to the hip socket. This is now to the side. I'm going to sneak my right arm in front and do a side bend over the working leg. My left side is completely relaxed, letting the head go. Try not to drop forward, but definitely side. Dancers, gymnasts, anyone with a bit of an advanced stretch, think of pressing your pelvis forward and lengthening even farther over the leg. The next position, again, this is all relative to the hip, the upper body, and lower body, pivot point, the hip. Relax forward, lengthening the lower back. Trying to maintain a turned out position on the working leg and a long, straight path directly out from your own hip bones. And keep breathing. I like to use my hands to come out of any severe position so you don't stress out the muscle on the way up. Congratulations if you're still with me. The next series of movements are moderate to advanced. I would definitely be careful when embarking upon this particular endeavor in terms of stretching. Uh, they're a little bit severe, but again, there's benefit for the person who hasn't really increased their range of motion. So, what you're going to do is just start lying on your back. When you're doing these laying down positions, you want to create space in the lower back. You never want for there to be light underneath here. So maintain a, a strong abdominal. And again, it's important that the cervical spine, the neck area, is also elongated. I like to start by tucking my chin, feeling that length, and maintaining it as I rest my head on the floor. We're going to work one leg at a time. But as you're working one leg, you also want to maintain a straight leg on the bottom, a little tension in there. There's no particular benefit or shortcut to grabbing one leg and having the other one come with it. So, elongate the bottom leg. Start by gently grasping over top of the knee. Long neck, long back, and you're just going to circle the ankle. This is going to help you strengthen and create some range of motion in the ankle, which is conducive to a safe landing in jumps to quick footwork and dance, that sort of thing. Ankles are very important. Just rolling one way, rolling the other way. You might feel some clicking and crunching if you're old like me. Don't panic, that's natural. 
And the next thing from here, you're going to take the foot to the inside of the opposite knee and gently do a spiral stretch. The goal being that your right knee goes to the ground and your right shoulder stays on the ground. You're spiraling through the lower back. You can take your head to the back arm as well so the entire spine is engaged. And then pull it back into the chest and let it go. Find that square position again. You would repeat this exercise on the other side, rolling the ankle, taking in the knee, spiraling out, bringing it gently back in. You can create a little tension here. Pull. It's going to target the hamstring and down. The next step of this, and some of you might want to, um, there are TheraBand products, which are the very flexible rubber pieces. You can hook them over the bottom of the foot to stretch and release. You can use a hand towel, an old t-shirt, a dishcloth, it doesn't matter. Until you get the range of motion, do whatever works for you. If you have achieved a certain range of motion, then we take the bottom of the heel and gently stretch, trying to keep it in line with the nose. We talked about the natural, where it just wants to wander out in the hip socket. Try and resist that. Then you're going to bend gently in, maintaining length on the bottom leg, pulling the knee towards the center, the heel towards the center, and gently stretch, targeting the hamstring. Think of locking out the knee. Bending, pulling straight down. There's no particular benefit to just releasing the heel and letting it go. Think of pulling actively into the center, stretching up at the top. As your range of motion increases, one, two. You can take this wherever the hamstring will allow. It'll keep going and going and going. Gently bend. Gently stretch wherever it works for you. There's a way you can also target the second. I like to take the same arm as leg, maintaining a long spine, long supporting side. Gently open the leg to the side without disturbing the line of the hip. The more your range of motion increases, the closer this leg is going to get to your ear. And again, pulling the heel, tension on the hamstring, gently stretching, concentrating on the back of the knee and in. There's also another one where once you're at the top, extending here, if you pull it across to the opposite shoulder without lifting the lower back and pulling it in, there's the IT bands on the outside of the thigh. This is killer. This is really good. The longer these get, the better it'll be. So you've got groin, hamstring, and the entire IT series over here, all of which need some attention. So just, again, listen to your body Feel every aspect of the connection of this leg to the upper body, all the connections surrounding the hip. And maintain your breath throughout. And relax. And let it go. And of course, you'd repeat this on the other side. Pulling the knee in, gently up, working down, working to the second, pulling it across to target the outside aspect of the leg, and relax. Make sure there's no tension in the neck and shoulders. And at the end, I like to just pull my knees into my chest. It takes the tension out of the lower back. Good for the digestive tract. In and work one at a time, one at a time, and relax. And uh, you're going to see a great benefit targeting your hamstring. That's going to do it. Achieving a stretch can sometimes be arduous, but maintaining it is not that bad. The rough part of the journey is really getting in there and increasing your range of motion, but then maintaining it just takes a few, you know, these repetitious exercises a few times a week and you'll keep it forever. Uh, I'd like to show for you, uh, display a few things about uh, the second position. There's several ways to stretch the second position. I'm going to start on the back. Let gravity help you. Anytime gravity is available, it's your friend. So again, find this long posture in the lower back. 
Start with the knees in. You can take them up and gently open according to your own range of motion directly in line with the hip. Okay, some people are very open through second, some people are quite stiff. Some people are longer in the hamstring than they are on the inside. Everyone's a little bit different, don't get frustrated. If you can keep a long neck and a long lower back, some tension in the knee, let gravity work, you're golden. The next thing you can do to increase this range actively is to firmly grip the heel, keeping the back and neck long, without lifting the pelvis off the floor, create some tension, and pull the leg to the desired range of motion. There are things you can also do, just maintaining the second position and incorporating the abdominal. So what's happening is uh, you're sort of taking your mind off the fact that your groin muscle could be hurting or a little discomfort, and you're working the core muscle, the abdominal, lifting the shoulder blade off the ground, maintaining your breathing, and up. Abs are another thing. I don't think I have to give you an abs 101. Everyone knows how to do an ab, lowers, uppers, obliques. Get that video separately. I'm concerned with stretch. Another way to increase your motion in the second position is to start with the legs to the side. Okay? Stack one hip on top of the other. Gently pull the knee into the side and extend forward. No big deal. The more you increase your range of motion, I like to reach in front of the thigh, behind the heel, out to the side, and gently extend without rolling the hip back in the socket, but maintaining forward and gently lengthening. Dancers, you can do développé, where it goes through the passe position, extends to the top, flex at the top to create not just a flexible muscle, but an efficient muscle, and reverse the enveloppé up for two, in for two, and lengthen down through susu for two. All sorts of things you can do. Another way to target the groin muscle, the second position, this is a little bit severe, not necessarily for the beginner, but starting with your knees directly underneath your hips, start to open them to second, and maintaining a tight abdominal, press down, and make sure that the knees, again, are level with the hip socket. You can lengthen the lower back, play around with the angle. I like to lean from side to side. And you may find yourself in a position here. You might want to cushion the knee so there's no tension, but this will really help to open up the hip socket. This is in fact a grand plie in second in terms of ballet technique. I like to flex my feet, lengthen the spine, contract the abdominals, and pull the hips under for maximum benefit. You can play with the angle forward and back, find out where the tension is, address it, and try and relieve it. You can work side to side, definitely feel that in the hip you're leaning towards, and in, and again, just to take any sort of tension off of this, you can relax. Child's pose in yoga is a great way to take all the tension off of the body Gently relax. If you like, you can pull the arms back and release that way. Remember, when you're doing these extreme stretches, be gentle. It's hard to talk about stretch without cross-referencing other disciplines. For example, as dancers, our fundamental form of movement is ballet. All of our technique is derived from that. It's ancient, it's proven, it's tried, it's true. I'd like to just touch upon a few of the basics of ballet. If you don't happen to have your own dance studio, as I am fortunate enough to have, you could just simply get a kitchen chair and use it as a reference. It's not a crutch, it's not something you're going to grip with a white knuckle, it's just a balance point and a reference. Ballet is different from other forms of movement in that you're creating a turned out position in the hip socket. So what you're endeavoring to do, if you can see from here, if this is a parallel position, ballet is worked in a turned out position. Okay, so you're now creating a relationship from the lower and upper body that's vastly different from something you might be used to. There are several positions that are very common in ballet. I'll just roughly go through them. The positions of the feet. There's first position where the heels are together, the knees are straight, you're lifted. The entire countenance of ballet is one of a lifted but relaxed 
posture. There's no tension. I like to tell my children that try and separate your ear bones from your collarbones and then look completely relaxed about it. There's an elegance, there's almost an arrogance about it, but I won't tell them that. Um, you've seen the snooty ballerinas, you know what I'm talking about. The basic positions, first position, the feet, second position, a little bit wider, again, still a flat hip. Third position is when the heel crosses halfway across the foot, and depending on your range of motion, a straight knee, absolutely. Fourth position can be opposite third or fifth or fourth. I've even seen fourth positions that are opposite second in some of the Limon technique. Fourth position is here and fifth is like the feet are in a box. You can't pronate, you can't round, you're lifted. Turnouts origins are in the hip. If you're turning out or pronating from the knee down, it can result in some serious injury. Never experience tension on the inside of the knee while you're working ballet. I know professional dancers who will save that particular kind of turnout for the stage. They'll work in class in a very relaxed posture, nothing too severe, and then they'll get on the stage and work it. So it's, you know, it's for selected moments that you're going to really exploit that turnout, unless it's very natural to you. Uh, the basic premise of Ballet is to create movement to strengthen the core muscles in this turned out position and it's also really good for injury prevention. There's a whole series of slow resistant exercises where you're building strength, building placement and line and spatial awareness and some of those are the plie is primarily to stretch the Achilles and to awaken the turnout muscles deep in the hip socket. In a demi plie in first position the heels maintain on the ground, you're pressing the heels into the ground, the body is lifted, the arm can go through to first position, press, and on the way up, it's like you're doing up the zipper on a tent, squeeze, and think of rotating everything through in a circular fashion. That demi play is repeated one, two, three, four, you go through the demi plie to the grand plie, the large bend, demi plie, the knees are opening, they're staying in line with the toe, Press the heels down as soon as possible and again squeeze at the top. It's like an isometric exercise. When you just take your hands and push one against the other or pull, it's that work. You're resisting, you're trying to turn out. So on the way down, it's not just about bending and stretching, it's about opening in the hip socket and closing with the turned out position. You're going to get more benefit from working these. It seems very simple to go up and down, big deal. Ballet is not hard. It is. It's engaging all of your core muscle and using all of your abs, everything is working at once. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. The hard way is going to get you more results more quickly. Let's see. The other things, uh, ballet dancers are primarily concerned with their feet, necessarily. And there are movements called tendu, where you're working from the hip again, maintaining a turned out position. You can go from first, you can go from fifth, you can tendu to the front, to the side, to the back, to the side. When you're working in those positions, it's called exercises en croix. So battement tendu. The heel leads, it disengages, you reach through the arch, and the toes come back. When you're working to second, you follow the natural line of your first and second toes exactly where they're pointing, and in. To the back, maintain a lifted hip, don't indulge the arch. No, you want to lift up and just press to the back, and then the heel comes in, trying to lift in the front. You find that center point again. Um, the next general progression is a battement dégagé, which is to disengage the foot from the floor. You go through the tendu snap, one inch off the floor, and again, this is, can be repeated en croix. Uh, rond de jambe, which is an exercise for the hip, wherein you isolate the hip structure, the leg maintains a turned out position, it goes to the second, it goes to the back, and brings it back through first. You can do this en dehors, which is working to the outside, or en dedans, which is bringing around to the inside, always maintaining the hip forward. There's just a few basic ballet things for you. Uh, there are frappes where you're massaging the ball of the foot and striking. So from a coupe position, snap and point. This is preliminary jump exercise. But I've always found the benefit of a frappe is on the way in. Fine. That works the foot and the arch and the structure. But pulling the knee back and maintaining the turnout really works that hip, which is what you're after. Strengthening in this turned out position. There's the passe position, which is used in pirouettes. There are développés, wherein you're using your entire range of motion 
boom, down. There's envelope, which reverses in and down. I'm not going to get too technical with you for ballet, but in these turned out positions, you may find that with your own body, you can more readily target the Achilles or the front of the hip rather than in a parallel position like the lunge. It just depends on your structure. But if you are embarking upon a serious career in dance, ballet, basics, fundamentals, everybody needs it. There's no way around it. Ballet is the basic form of all dance movement. If you're still with me, rock on. Here come some of the more severe and extreme stretches. Um, I've dealt with some contortionists who would argue that the stretch of the split is not the goal, it's the starting point. So even a 180 degree flexibility in the hip, nothing for them, no big deal. So in order to increase this flexibility in an advanced fashion, you have to be in a split position, number one. So if you're there, let's rock. So you're in a split position. Um, if you allow the hip to go to the natural, it's like the hip bones are pressing that way. I learned from some very smart gymnasts and contortionists that if you pull up and pull the back hip into parallel and then press down, you're getting vastly more benefit from this stretch. Even at this point, I've seen people twist and pull. So instead of allowing the relaxed sort of position, you're bringing it through and forward even more into parallel, even in a turned out position, or turned in position, that hip is gonna benefit radically from the stretch of this. You can flex the foot, very, very gently, flex the foot. Um, you can pull the back leg in, in this position to increase the strength and the stretch in the front of that hip, everything there. So again, even in these severe positions, find out what works for you, find out where the tension rests and target it in a sensible way. Again, the benefit being maintain the position for a while. Let's talk about uh, increasing your second position. There's a way to do this while you're seated. Just um, find a relaxed posture again. Some people will find that their hip structure dictates that they're gonna be hollowed and back. Your first goal is to get up on the sit bones and sit with length and authority right on top of them. You can do the side bends, side bends, inside, outside. I like to bend and flex, targeting the one leg. Uh, when you're doing these severe stretches, you'll find that you can actually change the structure of your knee, which sounds bizarre. But when I started, uh, I had straight legs. Subsequently, after years of stretching, with the increased length of the tendon, in the back and the ligament structure. If you look, for example, on this leg, that's a straight leg, but as I increased my stretch, I found that the length in the back of my leg increased. This is called hyperextension. Some people never get this. I believe that there is a genetic propensity. Either your, your knees are built this way or they're not, and, and it's available to you or not. Um, sometimes it's very, very coveted in certain lines, like in an aspect, an arabesque, when the leg is behind you uh, in ballet. That hyperextended line is very beautiful. In second position, the leg curving backwards at the knee and arching over the foot, valuable. Um, the way to increase this is to very gently just target it quite deliberately. I put one hand above my knee on the thigh so there's no tension in the kneecap. Gently grasp the foot and slowly pull without releasing the back of the knee off the ground. So it sounds a little radical, but instead of creating just a straight line, you're creating a curved line. Let me demonstrate on this right leg. So from here, if that's the range of motion in that knee, this is all relaxed. There's no thigh, there's no anything. I'm just gently increasing the length of my Achilles, the tendons and ligaments in the back of the knee. Be very gentle with this sort of thing. Uh, you can do it both feet and incorporate the lower back. So you're pulling and lengthening at the same time. You're definitely gonna feel this stretch if you're working in this severe position. Pulling the back to flat, lengthening. No tension in the neck. Uh, what else can we do? Again, well, Again, rolling through the second position. These are all very extreme and severe things. Um, a ballet dancer would have you maintain your turnout with the knees either facing up to the ceiling or better yet, even back behind you. My hips don't do that. If you can maintain your turnout while you're going into a flat position, 
good for you. What happens for me, and the most benefit for me, I feel this in an upright position. I feel the length of the groin muscle, definitely. And I work to maintain my turnout and an upright upper body. The best stretch for me is with the leg still straight, out from the hip, directly in line with the hip. And now what I try to do is adjust my own hip structure to find out where that tension lies. I'm going forward gently and back with the rock of the pelvis. There's no particular tension on the inside of my knee because I've increased the length of my groin muscle. Everything is cool. And again, vital to know the difference between discomfort, pain, and God forbid, injury. If you're doing these severe and extreme stretches and you hear this wet sort of <laughs> popping noise, stop. It's not the way to do it. Okay, just relax into everything. Maintain the length and keep breathing. To further the topic of hyperextension, there are a number of exercises you can do in a safe fashion to really target and attack the full range of motion. Hyperextension has to be treated with very, very, very specific and conscious efforts. What I'm going to do is put my front leg up onto the chair and try and create a split with the back leg. So I'm going from a split position to a hyperextended position. This is a radical stretch. This is not for the beginner. And even for someone trying it for the first time, you may want to put a cushion underneath the back leg. You may want to start with just four inches and gently, gently, gradually increase that range of motion. All right, from here, I like to line it up, keep it very nice and square, and I'm concentrating primarily on my back hip, trusting that this hamstring is long enough to accommodate the burden it's about to receive. Very gently, I'm gonna ease into this, wherein I'm pressing the back leg back. There, we're just about at split. And then, from now, the weight is transferred to the front hip. I'm gonna press towards the back of that front hip, and relax. For an increased stretch, I'm going to drop my center, my body, inside of my working leg for a greater range of motion. So I maintain here and lengthen the body down. So this is more for the back hip. This is more for the front leg. Front leg increase and then when you go to the inside, it transfers to the back. Be very very economical in your attack with these particular exercises. I would hate to see for anyone to get injured. When addressing issues of flexibility, let's talk about the whole body. There are schools of uh, contortionism that deal primarily with the flexibility of the spine and the shoulder. Uh, we don't need to be that severe as dancers. Contortionists are a very, very specialized and highly selected group of people. This is not for everybody. Uh, there are things that you can do though as, um, as a novice, as an intermediate dancer, as a beginning dancer, wherein you can just plant the hands underneath the shoulder. This is good for anyone. It just increases your range of motions. Flat underneath the shoulder and without crunching the shoulders up, press gently back and find out where your spine bends. Keeping the abs hot and tight, long and lifted neck, Find out what works for you, and down. It's important to remember that every time you do stretch in this position, you should counter stretch. You don't want to finish off with an arch. You want to finish off with it going the other way. Maintaining a healthy front means maintaining a healthy back. If one is good, the other odds are will be good. You can increase this stretch by flexing the toes underneath you in the back, keeping the front of the hip tight, and pressing into the arch gently pressing. I like to rock it out back and forth, finding out where the tension is. Nothing going on up here. Nice and relaxed. Shoulders tight. Don't let your shoulders ride up in your ears. Length. Length in the back of the neck and spine. Press. And again, finish by countering that stretch. If you're going to bend one way, try to bend the other. It'll just keep your back balanced and healthy. Acrobats, gymnastics, all of that sort of thing. Uh, the full back arch. The goal, 
is to have the weight equally distributed on all fours and lift the pelvis to the ceiling, again maintaining a long and relaxed neck. So you simply press up, no big deal. The more advanced part of this is to have the feet together and the legs pressing to straight. And again, relax it down, counter stretch the back, pulling it in. You might want to roll the head to the right, to the left, and just do a little tension check. And again, I can't reiterate strongly enough that when you're stretching the back in an arch position, counter stretch the other way to maintain health. Continuing in the vein of the more advanced and severe stretches, I'd like to show you one that I include in my regime just to warm up my second position. This is when the leg is uh, relative to the body sideways. What I like to do is find a stable wall, approach it, where is it? Lean against it. I'm going to plant my foot in a stable position underneath me. I'm going to grab my working leg, take it up to the side, grip with the other hand, and then gently explore the range of motion in this second, pressing over the top so you can easily get past 180 degrees here by gripping the heel and working, working, working into the supporting side. You can try taking it closer to the wall for an increased stretch, leaning out and pressing, 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 and of course you do that on both sides. It's important to maintain a strong supporting leg, make sure that the knee doesn't stress out inside, and again, keep breathing and stay relaxed. I have one more stretch for the acrobat or the gymnast, the advanced dancer. This just feels so good. It targets almost every aspect of what we've been talking about. Shoulder flexibility, length in the arch and the abdominal flexibility, the hip and the hamstring. It's a little bit contorty, so don't panic. What I do is I find, again, a secure wall. I'm going to place my supporting leg on the wall, develop it over, and work. So I plant my hands firmly underneath my shoulders, find the wall, press against it, and open my back leg. So I'm targeting my hamstring, shoulder, and the back leg, and curling in, and again, Make sure you round up through the back when completing this movement. Well, that's about it. I hope you found something useful to apply to your own exercise regime. I'd just like to finish in, in saying that um, dance has been an amazing vehicle for me. It's taken me all over the world. And we've spoken primarily today about the physical aspects of dance. But consider for the moment that Everyone was on an equal playing field in terms of their technique, their facility, their flexibility. What you have to include is a little bit about yourself. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Share your personality. Let your own individuality shine. Physicality is one thing, but your approach and your emotion and your investment and your personality, that's what's key. If you can find a way to use these two things in conjunction, there will be no obstacles if you've chosen to embark upon a path in dance or any athletic endeavor. If you're using this as primarily a recreational or, or stretching tool for your own benefit, I hope that you found that the content is informative and enough. Either way, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the purchase. Keep stretching, keep reaching. Thank you very much. My name is Craig Hempstead.